there are people that simply want to see themselves as superior to others, and that's an obscuration in and of itself. Nobody's superior to anybody else, not truly. Different people have different expertise, different skills, different capacity. That doesn't make them better than anybody else. It only means that's their knowledge base or their skill or their area of expertise. Strangely enough, some people shift from mindset to mindset to mindset, and they don't even know they're doing it. So in one moment, they may be in a spiritual mindset. In another, they may be in a relational mindset. In another, they may be in a somatic mindset. In another, they may be in a competitive mindset. In another, they may be in a, a mindset of entitlement or, uh, or privilege or elitism of some sort. In another moment, they might shift into an authoritarian mindset of, of trying to make other people do what they want or be the way they want them to be. And even, even using uh, force energy or ego force energy to affect those results. Others might shift into what they might call a noble purpose mindset. Like I'm doing something good for the world. And this is my noble purpose that, that I feel is my dharma or my destiny. And as wonderful as it is, it still may not allow for the realization of the oneness of all things, the oneness of all species, all sentient beings, all of humanity, all cultures, all genders, races, colors, creeds, philosophies, belief systems, and religions. <laughs> So each of, each of these mindsets leaves no room for others' priorities or values and rationalizes uh, their influence on others' ways of being without realizing that that's occurring. So these are all learning inabilities or limitations on potential learning, and thus potential evolution, and thus potential consciousness. So we would suggest that as much as mindsets offer us a functional capacity to manage some dimension of life, they're simultaneously, potentially, in many cases, antithetical to change and global and individual transformation or cultural transformation, or political transformation, or social transformation. So is, is any populist or nationalist mindset it going to be able to take into account the needs of all of humanity, or the needs of the planet? And one question we would ask is, how many senators and how many folks in the House of Representatives were elected to represent the ecosystem? Just the, not human beings, just the ecosystem and the planet. And, and, is, and what obscuration or mindset approach has generated this situation of not electing people to represent the ecosystem. Is, is the ego system of humanity another gigantic mindset? No different than white privilege or male privilege or a scientific narrow mindset or a democratic or republican mindset and are all these evolutionary and transformational straitjackets that are keeping us from solving the climate crisis so the, the what we haven't communicated here is what might be termed the eighth and ninth chakra energetic territorialism that we see in some degree affected in our world 
and we'll say what we mean by that. The, the eighth and ninth chakras, eighth and eighth chakra about four inches above your head, ninth chakra about a foot and a half above your head. Those are spiritual levels uh, that a lot of people operate at and develop power bases at, by the way. We're not saying they operate consciously. We're not saying they operate for the common good. And they have they are through their processes of amplified or magnified power in the world, staking out that territory and and claiming it, claiming to be experts or conscious or more powerful or more relevant beings in that level of human process within various nations. So what does that mean for a Deepak Chopra, for example, or an Oprah, or anyone else that is spiritually inclined and uh, very networked or powerful in the world? Do they have the capacity to have amplified influence on those levels based upon wealth and followership, energies? And are the eighth and ninth chakras of human systems egoless? Or are they potentially levels of ego? The question is, if we, if most human beings don't operate with that degree of power or influence at the eighth and ninth chakra levels, how do we manifest in alignment with spirit at those levels? not competitively with these other energies, how, how focused on monetization are, are people that, that, that operate at this level of uh, financial wherewithal? How much transaction and exchange paradigm energy do they operate from? And do they rationalize operating from? And do they do they operate as models in our world that others attempt to emulate? And do they represent supposed dynamics of abundance and achievement or attainment or superior capacity? And what are the implications of that paradigm? It does depend upon their spiritual awareness and their intentions. And, and that said, as wonderful as these people are, and they're as wonderful as anybody on the planet, these are not bad people, we would suggest that we feel, we perceive, their intentions to affect their beliefs or their values or their will or their process well we're we're not we wouldn't judge them we wouldn't criticize their process we're trying to describe a dynamic not a problem is that are we making sense with that If, if this territory is, if, if you get on a bus and all the seats are full on the bus, where are you going to sit? If these folks are filling that territory with their energy as, as the very wealthy and powerful uh, with their special interest agendas can steer the in, overtly influence, if not steer in some cases, the political process. What does that mean for the evolutionary path and process of the species? It could mean a downward spiral, or it could just mean a wobble in the wheel. It, it could mean a limitation on attainment of consciousness. Uh, it, it could mean that that if we as human beings value or laud or applaud financial achievements in our world above love or above service intention 
and 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 the glitz and the glamour of that above humble service attainment humble service is the only way we would suggest ever operating as and we don't claim to be uh uh, achieved in that regard we're just saying that that's the star to follow that we would suggest for humanity forever uh, if these folks are are operating in in these ways focused on dynamics of monetization then and and people follow them and people attempt to emulate them what are we creating in the world as a mindset and in the United States as a mindset? And does that go directly against our capacity to operate at, in humble service and our capacity to transform ourselves to dial down carbon? <laughs>